In this video, we're going to take a look at the microscopic structure of bone. So recall that there are two different types of bone. There's compact bone and there's spongy bone. And regardless of the bone shape, uh, any shape of bone will have both compact bone and spongy bone. In the case of a long bone, compact bone is found in the diaphysis and spongy bone fills the epiphyses. Let's take a look at the microscopic appearance of compact bone first. Compact bone is made out of a basic subunit called an osteon, and an osteon uh, runs the longitudinal axis of the bone, and so the osteons would be kind of like the lines I'm drawing, they're running the longitudinal axis of the bone, and each osteon has a specific structure. The structure and the arrangement of osteons and compact bone kind of remind me of a bundle of straws. They're going to be packed together, and they're going to run the longitudinal axis of the bone, and each osteon is hollow in the center, just like a straw. Taking a closer look at compact bone, each one of these circular structures is a cross-section of an osteon. So each one of these is the straw-like structure or an osteon, and they're even taking an osteon in this picture and uh, pulling it out of the bone so you can see the different segments. But everything that I'm outlining here is a single osteon. So taking a closer look at the structure of one osteon, you might notice that it looks like a tree trunk. Do you notice how it's made up of these um, concentric rings? Those are rings of matrix called lamellae. In between the lamellae, these little uh, yellow cells that they're drawing, uh, those are the osteocytes. The osteocytes live in a little space called a lacuna, uh, wedged in between the lamellae. Taking a closer look at that, we can see this is an osteocyte, and the osteocyte exists in a lacuna, a little spot. And do you notice that there are little passageways that interconnect the osteocytes together? So although it looks like the osteocytes are completely isolated from each other, they actually grow these processes that uh, branch out, and the osteocytes interconnect through this little network of passageways. Those little passageways that look kind of like pencil etching on the slide, those are canaliculi. The center of the osteon is known as the central canal or the haversion canal, and it contains blood vessels. So thinking this through, if we were to take um, straws or osteons and place them as close together as we could, because they're cylindrical structures, no matter how close we place the osteons together, there's always going to be a gap in between that structure. And this gap is filled in with incomplete lamellae called interstitial lamellae. You can see the interstitial lamellae in this diagram here, filling in the gaps in between the osteons. Also notice that the outer periphery of bone is smooth. When I look at our diagram, I see that the outer periphery is not smooth, right? Because it's made out of osteons, and I want to explain that. So what happens around the outer periphery is the same thing uh, that happens in between the uh, osteons, which is there are lamellae that will run the circumference of the entire bone. Uh, they're called circumferential lamellae, and we can see the circumferential lamellae in this diagram running around the entire circumference of the bone and making the outer periphery smooth. Last, let's take a look at the blood supply. We know the periosteum, the membrane on the outer periphery of bone, is vascular. And so we can see the blood supply that's present uh, in the membrane that's encasing the bone. We know that the medullary cavity, which would be this area, contains bone marrow, and so there's definitely a bone supply here. And we also just learned that the central canal, or the haversion canal, of every single osteon contains blood supply, contains blood vessels. But how is this blood supply interconnected? Let me show you. The blood supply is interconnected at um, through canals that are perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of, of the bone called a perforating canal or Fulkman's canals. So what they do is interconnect the blood supply contained within the central canals of all of the osteons, and they also create a continuous blood flow between the outer periphery of the bone and the medullary cavity. So to wrap up the microscopic structure of compact bone, let's just take a quick look at 
osteons in context to the diaphysis of a bone. So if we took a look at the whole bone in cross-section, we know that the periosteum is on the outer periphery and there's going to be a hollow inside of the bone called the medullary cavity and that's where the bone marrow exists. And to put that in context with the osteons, the osteons, remember, are running the longitudinal axis of the bone and so the osteons are what are creating this um, ring of compact bone and each osteon is made out of concentric rings of matrix and each osteon is also hollow and so sometimes that's confusing because there's the hollow medullary cavity of the whole bone and then of course each osteon is also hollow. Taking a look at the microscopic structure of spongy bone we know that spongy bone is made out of these little pieces called trabeculae and taking a closer look at a trabecula we can see that it is also made out of concentric rings of matrix those are called lamellae. The osteocytes live in between the lamellae, and we can see the canaliculi, but notice how it's not a true osteon. It doesn't have a haversian canal, and so it's a variation of what we saw before.